Thanks for clicking on the video. This is FL Studio's complete beginner guide. I want to show you everything that you need to know in order to use FL Studios effectively and efficiently. In this video, I'll be covering all the menus and buttons and everything that you need to know in order to create your first beat. I'll be going over every menu and every button so you know what you're doing and you can effectively and efficiently make beats. No need to feel confused anymore. Before we get into that though, let me tell you who I am. My name is Elijah Walker. I've been making music for over 13 years. FL Studios loyalist. Mixing, mastering, producing. That's me. So without further ado, let's hop in. So when you first open up FL Studios, this is what you'll look like. Uh, this is your interface before I do anything else. Um, sometimes you'll see everything just opened up in your face when you open it up. Super confusing. So, if all this is here, let's declutter. You can right click at the top, go to compact. From here, close, tap all of these until they go away. So now you have a blank screen, you have a, a beautiful window waiting for you. But let's start from the beginning. We have file. You can go through here, check your files, most recent. You can save, save as, save new, import different MIDI files. You can export your stuff and see recent files. Here you have your edit. Usually it's undo. Uh, the short key for that is control Z. Plugins, patterns, views, options. You can change your settings and, and anything else that you would want to do. Um, and here you have extracurricular tools and you have help. And don't worry, we will be going through these. I just want to give you an overview. Uh, over here you have song and pattern knob, play, stop, record. Right here is your tempo. You have your playlist, your piano roll, your channel rack, and your mixer. Uh, if you notice on your left hand side, if, as you hover over these, they'll give you a little indication of what it is. So that's pretty dope. You have your song position. This will tell you in seconds, beats, minutes, where you're at in your song. You have your pattern. In FL Studios, you make patterns. And then once your patterns are completed, you can arrange them later. Now that you understand what's going on on the top, let's begin with the playlist. So in the playlist, you have patterns. You'll make new patterns as you go. And from here, you can drag patterns, put them in, place them where you need to. Up here, you have snap to grid, draw, paint, delete, mute, uh, slip, cut, and so on. And so if you have the draw on, you can click, slide around, place your pattern. If you have the paint on, you can hold and just slide them across. Whenever you're in the playlist, you can right click to delete and left click to place. These little green knobs, you can click these to mute a track if you want to hear single track in isolation. You can also slide these up and down. At any point, you can right click on a track, change the color name. So change the name, change the color, accept. And now that's track high. Cool. That's pretty much it for when it comes to the playlist. And now that you have a better understanding of the playlist, let's go into the channel rack. So in your channel rack, you have channel options. You can go through here, clone, delete, uh, do a number of things to your channel. Uh, there's loop mode. You have your play pause button. Click play, pause it. You can also do that up here. You have your swing knob. Up here is the pattern length. You can do two bars, four bars, eight, 16, all the way up to 40 in one channel rack. Right here you have your graphic editor. And over here you have your step sequencer. This is your target mixer. So. When we get into the mixer section, I'll show you how uh, the mixer works. But for now, you can send these to a specific mixer track by changing it. You can hover over it and use your scroll wheel. If you don't have one, you can slide. You can also right click and reset it back to nothing. Uh, it puts it on the master track. It's good practice to put each instrument 
on its own track. So from here, you can go through your browser and add sounds. These are the default sounds, but I want to pull out my sounds. Probably the quickest, easiest, and best way to flesh out a drum pattern is to go to your channel rack, pick some drums, snares, kicks, whatever it may be, and, and get it in. So I'm going to do something really quick, quick snares, and maybe some hi-hats. Already basic, but you get the idea. You can also adjust your tempo, which you know is at the top now. And that's the channel rack, super simple. And now your pattern's here. If you went to over here and hit new pattern, you're on pattern two, you can name it. Track two is called there. You see pattern one, all your stuff is still here, pattern two. And then you can go. You have song mode and pattern mode. If you're in pattern mode, it'll only play the sounds that are in your current channel rack selection. So I'm in there. So if I click play, if I go back to pattern one, and then if I go here, pattern one there, play at the same time, go to song, and as you can hear, it plays both together. So make sure you pay attention to which mode you're in if you're trying to listen to a pattern. If you want to come down here to add VSTs, virtual instruments, um, you can do that. things of that nature. It's just this little plus right here. So let's go back to pattern one. I want to show you something. So let's say we go to hat. If we click it, it brings up the wrapper. The wrapper gives you uh, more in-depth tools and controls. So that way you can change the pitch, you can change the speed, and you can change stretch the time. Check this out. Did you hear the pitch increase? pitch decrease. So you can come in here into the wrapper and do all kinds of different uh, polarity swaps, reverse, normalize. You can right click the knob and reset it. Also, when you have a sample selected, you can go to the graphic editor and actually go in here and change your pitch you and change velocity, so on and so forth. As you see here, release, fine pitch, panning, your mod shift. I wouldn't worry too much about the extracurriculars. That is outside the scope of this video. However, you can slide around. So the channel rack is really cool, but say you want to extend some notes or you want to chop some notes, say this channel rack isn't enough for you. Let's go to here. We're going to add a new channel and we're going to add boo bass. This is a uh, super cool, simple, bass guitar VST. But what I really want to show you is this right here. It's called piano roll. Now that we have our VST in here, we can add some notes. And I'll hit play. But that's not really cool for bass. So this is where piano roll comes in. As you can see, the piano roll is here. In piano roll, you have Pretty much the similar assets as you would in your playlist. You have paint, you know, paint and sequence mode, mute, all kinds of things here. So you can slide this. And any note you click on, it'll play for you. So I'm just going to do a quick little bass, slide these out, left click to slide, 
And of course, right click will delete. And that's your piano roll. Piano roll, piano roll. Another way to get to your piano roll is any instrument, any sample that you're on, you can right click, piano roll. It's the first one. There's also the select function, where you can select a whole bunch of notes. You can go back to your draw and you can lift them up. Change the whole pitch octave range Let's do it to the bass. Piano roll, select, draw. And that is the piano roll. I wanna take a brief break here to say thank you for watching. And if I've helped you in any way, if you feel less intimidated or have learned anything, please subscribe. All right, now back to the video. Now that we've gone through the playlist, the channel rack, let's go on to the mixer. Mixer is your friend. Within the mixer, you have your sound meter, shows in decibels. You have your master track. You have reverse polarity here, left and right channel swap. You have your panning. You can pan the music to the left or right speaker. Reset. This is your slider for volume. Down here you have track latency, arm disc for recording, and this is your master track. These are your inserts. As we saw on the channel rack, this insert is where your samples will be sent to. The inserts themselves have the same setup as the master track. On your right hand side of the mixer track, you have your post effects. Here you can add reverbs, delays, and things like that. So let's say I like my snare it's selected, but I kind of want to add some sauce. So it's on four, go to insert four. Let's put a delay on it. And when you hear it, and so you can do things, you can, you can add a myriad of things. There's so much to play with in here, but this is where you add your post effects. And that is your mixer. And just so you have an overview of, of how the sound works in FL Studios, in this DAW, your browser holds all your sounds, all your samples. The samples are then sent to your channel rack via you. Once you have music in here, any samples that you put through here, the sound will be sent to your track inserts. The inserts feed to the master. So browser, channel rack, inserts, master. All of your sound comes out of your master. I've cleaned my interface, that way you can see what's going on and we can go through one quick summary. Once again, you have your menu panel at the top. Underneath it, your hint panel. It'll show you what you're hovering over. You have your play mode, song mode. You have your play and pause, your stop, your record, your tempo. Your timing, patterns. You have your playlist. You have your piano roll, you have your channel rack, and of course you have your mixer. This last one, if you're wondering, is to close your browser. And let's do one overview of the flow of sound. So samples into your channel rack, channel rack into your mixer. The sample sound will go into an insert and all the inserts will come out your master. So it doesn't matter what's going on on your inserts. Your master controls all the external sound, all of your output. So you made it. I think you're ready. I think you're confident. I appreciate you sticking around to see the whole video, to get some information for yourself. Hopefully I have helped you to be encouraged, to not be confused, to understand what's going on. I have a special treat for those who stay to the end. I have a special Jay Dilla pack. If you give me just another minute of your time, I'll show you how to add that to your, your FL Studio so you can hop right in. So inside of your menu panel, you're gonna go to options, 
file management. Here, it'll show you all your files. Click on the white portion of the folder, locate the file in which you downloaded it in the description, and now you have a new FL Studio sound kit for yourself. If it doesn't show up immediately, restart your FL Studio, and now you have a J Dilla kit. Thank you, please subscribe, have a wonderful day, keep creating. And that's it, that's the end of the video. I hope you're not scared or intimidated anymore. I want you to hop in there and make some music. Please leave me questions in the comment section. Leave me the beats that you made in the comment section. I want links to everything. I wanna help y'all, I wanna hear the music that you make. It's been a pleasure and an honor.